Today in the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, we're exploring the new AI masks in Photolab 9 and how they open up smarter masking possibilities. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. In today's video, I'm going to show you how the new AI masks in Photolab 9 work and how you can combine them with tools like gradients and brushes to get more refined results. I've got three different examples lined up so you'll see how these masking ideas apply in different situations. Just a quick reminder, my affiliate links are in the description below. You can purchase or try a free trial of DxO software, and new customers can save 15% at checkout with my promo code Dave Kelly. That's all one word, Dave Kelly. When you use my affiliate links, I do make a small commission, and that really helps to support my channel, so thank you. Let's go ahead and get started. AI masking, where do we find it? Up here in the upper right-hand side of this panel over here. You see this button right here looks like a little brush with a little selection circle around it. Give that a click. These are your local adjustments and you're gonna find all of your masking tools right inside of here. And this first button is for AI masking. So we'll give that a click. And now if we come down here to the lower part of the interface, you see we have all these different AI masking tools. If I hover over this tool, it tells me this tool will add to a selection, this tool will remove from a selection, and this tool will add an area. This will take away from an area. And then we have this drop down. If we click the drop down, and if you hover over any of the different options in here, like for instance, flowers, you can see with that magenta overlay, the flowers have been selected. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I click on flowers, note that I've added a new mask called mask one. Now you can double click in these masks and rename them. For instance, I'll type in flowers. So that's nice to keep yourself organized. And note that it missed the B in the mask because it is not a flower. Now, if I want to, I can use any of these adjustments down here. For instance, saturation or selective tone. For instance, maybe I want to open up the highlights a little bit on the flowers to maybe somewhere right there. Maybe I want to give them a little bit more saturation. Not much, but just a little wee bit. I think right here should be good. Now let's say I want to pump up a little bit of micro contrast in this area of this flower. To do that, we can go with another AI mask. This time I'll click here to see if I can find a selection. I'm going to hover over this area of the flower, and yes, it gets it. It misses the B, and I think I want the B too. I'm going to click here, and you'll note when I do, I add another new mask here. Now, if I want to add this B to this area right here, what I need to do is add a submask. And to do that, you'll click this button right here. This will give you a submask. And now I'll hover over that B and give it a click, and now it is added. And now I can simply come here to micro contrast and let's drag this to the right and add some micro contrast. I'll drag it up a little more than I normally would just so you can see it, something like that. By the way, if you want to see before and afters of your local adjustments, just come up to your masks and click the eye to shut it off. That's the before. Click it again to turn it back on. And that's the after. By the way, if you hover your cursor over any of the different masks, you can see by the overlay what the mask is actually selecting. We're going to go ahead and move on to another example. When you're done masking, make sure you click this button right here, close, to close up the masking interface. If you want to see an overall before and after, just click and hold this button down right here. There's the before, release the click, and here is the after. And now I'll click on this image so we can work on it next. What I want to do with this image is darken up the sky a bit, and we could use a local adjustment, so come over and click this button for local adjustments. Now, I want to use an AI mask to select the sky, so we'll click this button right here. I want to use a predefined mask, so click the drop down and find sky and give that a click. And now if I hover over this area, you can see my sky has been selected nicely. Now let's darken up the exposure. So let's come to exposure. I'll start to drag this to the left and I want to darken it up maybe to somewhere right around there. Now I want to give it a little bit more saturation so we could come down here. We can use any of these adjustments here. Let's go ahead and give it more saturation. I'll drag the saturation slider to the right over to 
maybe right about there, so we can really see I've added saturation. But I have a bit of an issue because this area of the sky right here has gotten too dark and I want to fix that. And let me show you an advanced masking technique we can use right here in Photo Lab 9. Now follow me closely. We need to add a sub mask. So we'll click this button right here. We've added a sub mask. You see it right here? And now let's use a graduated filter. So click this button right here. And what I want to do is click and drag up a graduated filter right like this. And now let's take a look at the mask. See right here where it says show masks? Click that on. But now what has happened, I've selected the entire image. In other words, I'm darkening the entire image. So if I shut off show masks, you can see the entire image has gotten dark. And I've added this graduated filter, but here's what we need to do. There's a really cool feature here in the new AI masks. And that is this button right here for inverting a shape. This graduated filter is a shape. Now you might think, Dave, you could just invert this graduated filter, but that's not going to do it for me. So if I click on invert shape, watch the image when I click this. See how this goes out here? Now let's uh, look at this in black and white. I'm going to click this overlay drop down and turn on black and white. And you can see what I've done here. See how this graduated filter is fading off that horizon. See how it's going darker right there? So I can get a more natural adjustment on the edge here. I'll uncheck show mask so we can see the image. And now here's something else we can do. And this is another really cool technique. This graduated filter is a sub mask. And right here for mask options, you see where it says sub mask one, I can take the opacity of this, take it the whole way off. And now slowly build up that graduated filter. I'll start to drag it to the right. Notice how the horizon is starting to lighten. Isn't that cool? And I'll stop where I think it looks most natural. And I think it does maybe right around here. See how the horizon is lightened up. So that's a really cool technique. And then of course, I can always play around with the graduation point right here, or I can move it up as you can see, or move this down. Now, if I click on show masks, when I move this up and down, you can actually see the mask itself, what is happening there. So I can darken that area right above the horizon a little bit more and readjust it. So that is pretty cool. Now, when I said darken this area above the horizon, I'm actually lightening that area, but I'm adding a darker portion of the mask right here, which will take that out of the overall darkening adjustment. Now let's see the image back. Just click show masks again. And now here's our image and let's shut off this mask. Here's before and here's after. And now with this advanced masking technique, we're maintaining the proper light level in the horizon. Now, if we click on the AI sky mask, we can use this opacity adjustment to fine tune how dark it gets. So I'll take this the whole way off and now let's just build it up slowly and stop where we think it looks really natural and how about right about here at like 92. Now let me go ahead and shut off the graduated filter adjustment by clicking the eye here. So that's what it looks like. See how dark that horizon gets? Now let me turn it back on. See how it lightens up? Now if you want to see an overall before and after for your local adjustments, click this button right here. There's before. Click it again. And now here is after. When you're done in local adjustments, don't forget to click close to get out of there. Now let me click the compare button. We started out here and now we end up here. But I'll tell you what, I really like the fact that I darkened up the sky and added a little bit more saturation. And this looks real natural in here. I have one more example for you. I'm going to click on this image. And what I want to do here, see this hoodie? It has a blue cast on it. I want to reduce the blue saturation on the hoodie. And then I want to reduce the saturation on this jacket a bit and also on the background. And we're going to use AI masking to help us here. So first off, we're going to click this button to go into local adjustments. Let's work on this hoodie first. So what we're going to do is click on this button for AI masking. And I want to click this button. Right now we're seeing the mask is a black and white mask. Let's go ahead and change this by clicking this drop down to overlay. So I'm going to hover here. And as soon as I click, you'll note I have a mask here. There's that mask. Now, don't forget, you can name these masks any name you want. And now I want to add to this. Now, if I just click right now, it will add a whole new mask here. And I don't want that. I want to add this to this group. So to do that, we need a sub mask. Click this button. And now let's hover right here and give that a click. And it's added it. Now to add another one, we need to click sub mask again, and I'm going to click right here and add that in. I'm going to click one more time the sub mask button, and let's add this little circle right here. 
All right, so now we have that. And now we'll come over to the right side of the interface. Now remember, any of these adjustments in here you can use. I want to use saturation. So I'm going to take the saturation and start to pull it to the left and reduce that blue cast on the hoodie. And I think maybe right about here looks good. Isn't that nice? I like that. I'm going to come back up to the top here to our masks. Now I want to reduce the saturation on this jacket here. Now I could try to select it with the add area. And it does okay, but it gets out into some of these areas a little bit. I'm going to show you this tool. I haven't showed you this yet. Let's click on this button. We can add an area by dragging out a selection. Let me show you how. I'm going to click and drag around this area of the jacket, but I want you to note when I do that, I'll add a whole brand new mask, which is what I want. So I'm going to click and drag right like that, and then release the left click of my mouse. And you can see I've added a new mask. Now I want to get this other side of the jacket, so we're going to click on the sub mask button. And what I want to do is click and drag here and select that area of the jacket. Now it's overshot and got this area of the hoodie, so what we can do is we can click on a brush tool like this brush tool right here. We can adjust the size of that brush and we can adjust the feathering of the brush, whatever you need to do here. And I want to size maybe right around here and I just want to paint this off. Right now we see a positive. You could click the negative brush or you could hold down your alt or option key and I can just paint that off there. You see that? Isn't that cool? And down in this area, I'm still holding down my option key or alt key and I'll just paint this area off right in here. It's overshot the hoodie here a little bit. We'll get rid of that, but you see how easy that is? So we could combine different techniques here. I think this area is part of the hoodie. Again, I'm holding down my option key and I'll paint this area off too. And now I'm going to take the saturation slider and drag it to the left and just reduce some of the blue from the blue jean jacket, make it look a little more natural. And I think maybe right about there looks pretty good. And while I'm at it, let's give it some micro contrast. We already have it selected, so I'll take the micro contrast, we'll drag it to the right and increase that micro contrast. I think that will look good. And now I want to reduce the saturation in the background. So we're going to add another AI mask. So click this button for AI masks. We want to do a predefined mask. So let's click the drop down and let's hover over background. And we can see we've selected the background. It's got a little bit of our pants there. I'm not worried about that because there's really no saturation there anyway. So I'll click background and you'll note we have a new mask. And all we have to do here is come to saturation and let's ease off on that saturation to somewhere maybe right about here. Maybe I'll add back just a little bit, maybe right there. Now let's come up to local adjustments. I'll shut off local adjustments. We started here and now we end up here. Well, there it is, everyone. I think you're really going to love these new AI masks in PhotoLab 9. They make masking faster, more accurate, and just a lot more fun to use. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click also that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.